for season 14's third race, we are in Monte Carlo and it's UK but one pole from Rabo and an Op Huey. Then it's Sauce, Kimes and Sebo Campo fifth place. Alongside him is fellow championship contender Ina Babnis and it's Dav Sanchez, David Camno, Mahavira Gunnison and Marcus Nelson rounding out the top 10. Then it's MF1 World, Akari and Jaco Tigranes. Leo is 14th from Yuki Suo and Daniel Bogdisarov. Pastor Manalo 17th from Milrez and Bob. Then it's Lawless Chaclerk, Teodor Schumacher and JD Ventor. For the first time in a long while, the Monaco E Prix, or the Monte Carlo E Prix as it's now called, is wet. Has all five lights gone for the third round of the season? We go green, and what a start from UK Ball immediately. He's not scored any points so far, but he's gotten the point off of the start. He leads the way, coming through Sandoval, and Arcuri right on his tail, having gone past Raybo. And Raybo, by the way, under threat from Sabo Kappa after that three. After that third position, rather. So it's an Arcuri currently leading the way from you, Cable and Raybo. They go side by side, coming through the hairpin. One of the slowest bends on the track, and into the wall has gone you, Cable. Track's been cleared, but that's been a second in between the race leaders. Marcus Nelson fighting harder for those positions, and into the wall there. That is Theodore Schumacher. Lola to Clerk with a five second time penalty. But for the first time in a long while here in Monte Carlo, I was about to say everyone's made it scot free. But everyone goes seven copper out of the race, has gone new cable, and there's been a massive blockage here at the swimming pool chicane. Can we get it through here? It's a massive blockage caused by just one car in new cable. And Kynes is out, Babin is out, the championship leader, Thai championship leader, out of the race. Look at how many drivers we're losing in this incident. We've lost Kynes, we've lost Babinus, we've lost Dakar, we've lost Nelson, we've lost Leo and JD Venter. But has just gone through that now, Marcus, uh, Marcus Nelson out as well as Pastor Malinado. And we are down to 14 runners and it is only the second lap here in Monte Carlo. So it's currently Ray vote second place. He's behind and not queuing for a Red Bull Formula E team. Who currently looks to have a stranglehold on the lead in this race. We've gone through an entire lap under full course yellows. So here's an Arc Huey then coming through that chicane. Uh Dash Sanchez, by the way, up into second. And oh! Off into the wall has just gone Dash Sanchez! Is Sebo Campo getting a time pass to that? Raybo is missing his front wing! Dav Sanchez, he's still got his front wing. Someone's gone off in that second. That is the other road in, in the wall. MF1 wall, also in the wall there with Daniel Bogdasarov. And what is causing these issues at this part of the track? Raybo off at the pit lane. Can he get his car actually turned? Because he lost quite a lot of downforce without that front wing. But he is in the pits now. He's going to have to go into new intermediate, so he's got to have a little more grip than the cars around him. Yuki Suo missing his front wing too, and someone else off at the pit lane. You know, we have a five-second tire policy for Daniel Bog to saw off. Track's been cleared once again, so that was likely for MF1 World, who has barely anything left on his car. JD Venter with the fast lap, it's a 108.216. This is a track we usually see sub one second and off has gone and not Kiwi, your race leader facing turmoil in the west. I am shocked that we are still allowing this race to go on when tyres is on the cars are not really working out. Raguna and Integrana is both in the wall. This is an absolute wreck fest, isn't it? This happens a lot in Monaco, and usually when we have a wreck fest like this, I don't catch it. And yellow flags in both second and third sectors as Camino spins and out of the race has gone Daniel Bogdasarov. That was the Andretti you just saw there. Sabo Campo with problems. Tigranes out of the race. And it's at the chicane, we believe. We're coming with, onto the chicane with uh, Milrez is of Switzerland. And yeah, I don't really know what much, too much what's happening. 
this is the race where most of the budget is being done, by the way, the Discord guys, so, um, have fun with that. <laughs> oh my god, no one is gaining money today. So it's Dav Sanchez currently leading the way somehow in this crazy race from Sevo Campo and Mahade Ragunathan. Almost hitting the wall there. But I think... Oh, no, I was going to say they were fine, but Mahavir Raguna has been in the wall. And he's missing part of his front wing. This is something that happens a lot of the time. You hit that wall, you've lost your front wing, and it just unsettles the car coming through this final sector. Uh, Yellow's in the second again, and oh, that looks to be a little bit of a bigger crash. Bob in the wall there, having a bit of a tank slap, and yeah, that is Raguna has been in the wall. They say the track's been cleared. There's no way you can say track's been cleared when there is still a car facing the wrong direction at pit entry. David cameron has gone off. Oh, Yellow's still in that second sector. Track's been cleared again. And that is an Occhi. And he is out. 14 laps left. In this Monaco E3, this Monte Carlo E3. And in just the first five, we've lost half of the field. Yuki Suo is hitting a fastest lap of the E3 at 104.6. And his teammate goes into the barriers. The other Andretti, also in the wall, waits himself again. Milrez coming through. And MF1 World is out. MF1 World out of the E3. Dan Sanchez almost hitting the wall. Or coming out of that penultimate turn. Third to last turn, rather. And he... Oh, he's had a tank slapper, and he is out. Dav Sanchez out to the E3, and that has left Sebo Campo leading the way. Mil Rez out as well. JD, oh my goodness me, Raybo and Jack Clark both out of the E3 as well. And if Bob can't get his car facing the right direction, it'll be him as well. Raguna's been having to slide through that minuscule gap. Yuki Suo just about getting through now. We are down to six runners on the sixth lap. These are the kinds of collisions and wreck numbers you expect to see at a track like, for example, Spielberg that we don't race on anymore. It's dry now as well. Ocampo is still out there on his intermediate tyres. We're going to go on board with Sebo Campo in the number 76 car. Can he keep his car facing in the right direction? He slams the wall, but he is currently still fine. So JD Benzo, he is currently 28 seconds off the back of Sebo Campo. And I think we are going to have to... And yeah, race control says red flags, red flags have been flying have been flown for the amount of damage that has been caused. So, as you can see, Ocampo coming into the pits, and we will restart the race. We will restart the race with the original starting order. Considering the nature of this championship, we don't actually have to cut the race laps. So, it's the starting grid from before, because every team has two spare cars. They are required to. So they are still fine to continue this race with the original lap distance. It's going to make this race a lot longer than others, but in the interest of us not having five cars finish, the original seven laps, by the way, will not go towards the initial budget. So I'm pretty sure everyone will be happy to hear that. So after that absolute wreck fest in the wet, we're going to go back racing in Monte Carlo. Now we will have another 19 laps of racing. And as it was before, UK ball with a very good stop. As it was before, Anok Kiwi sending it down the inside on Raybo. But unlike before, Ocampo dropping down to sixth place. Heine Babnus up in fifth now, ahead of his championship rival. So it's UK ball from Yui, from Raybo, from Kynes, who is looking to try and send it down the inside. So is Anok Kiwi, who takes the lead. It, many pieces of... Of debris flying off and into the wall has gone one of the drivers we have not been able to see who because of the shoddy camera work that we have coming through here and someone else has gone off and that driver has 
being able to continue racing. Oh no, it's not. It's MF1 while facing the wrong direction. Can he get his car back facing the right direction? And the race leader is now coming through the final chicane. That is UK Bowl leading the way two seconds ahead of an Arculean Rayho. And it's the second race where race control have had to step in and change the things. Virtual safety car called is Daniel Bogdasarov out. That is Daniel Bogdasarov. That is Mila Rice. And that is JD Venter. And the man currently third in the world driver's standings. He's got a lot to pick himself up from now. He's down in 20th position. He doesn't look to make another pit stop. He doesn't look like he has to. He could. He doesn't. But he's 20th. And he's 17 seconds off the lead on the second lap. This is a race that has, has a lot of chaos. So much chaos that we actually had to fly a red flag. We go racing again. UK ball coming through the swimming pool chicane, just about keeping it out of the wall. Well, Dean's driver's been told to keep it clean in no uncertain terms from their teams. They don't want to have to pay massive damage bills. And then they should be getting their payout race to race. So we look now, Marcus Nelson currently 10th place. Opted to go for the hard tires. Three of 19, then JD Benz is sending a faster second sector of anyone. He's 20th place. He may be in penultimate at last position, but he's certainly not driving like it. He still has a race to, to try and score points in. UK Ball setting the fastest first sector of anyone. And JD Benz is setting a 105.583. And the gap between the road two leaders is 1.159 seconds. It's not exactly closing. But sadly for Anokui, it's not opening either. As Revo, we go on board with him. The Italian, who we believe has won a few races around this track. He's currently trying to gain on that Red Bull Formula E car ahead of him. But the thing is, if you can't make an overtake on the first lap, you can't really do it without forcing your opponent into the wall in some uncertain terms. UK ball the new fast lap to 104.250. 1.3 seconds quicker than what JD Vence has set. He is currently the class of the field out here. JD Vence resets that now a 102.616. He is a man on a mission. Let's take a look at the 23 car now. Oh, going up through Casino Square now, and he is doing his damnedest to try and close up to the back of the Skoda of Theodore Schumacher to try and take that 19th position away from him. If he can get close enough to do that, he can get close enough to go for points because of how close everyone is around this track. Too small for F1, large enough for Formula E. Got this ball. I don't think it's commenting on all my videos, but there you go. Shady Vince, you can see the back of that Skoda car. And this is going to be a race that you're going to want to see to the end. Because he's got a very good chance at taking some very well-needed points away from Skoda. But it's all going to come down to once the checkered flag falls at the end of this race. As long as the checkered flag falls. Now, five tenths separating second and third. This could be a better race to try and take a look at than any other around the field. JD Benson really is taking out chunks from Theodore Schumacher, who is currently the driver ahead of the 23 car. But that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the seven of Revo. He chases down an Ocui in the number 29 car for that second position. Coming through the chicanes, and he's just really just trying to find where he's stronger than an Arc Huey. If he can find those places and maximize everything out of those turns and straight, and he can try and go for an overtake. 
got DRS on this lap. DRS was activated on the second lap, but no real overtakes can really be made around this track. It's one of the most difficult tracks on the calendar. And past the Maldonado peels into the pits. He's going to go into the medium compound of tyres. Tyre will bring in, a, bring in a sturdier construction of tyres for this race. As you would know. We're going to see if we can get some team radio in for this race. We're going to see if we can get some team radio. As we see, an Oculus dive down on through the swimming push cane. And we've got yellow flags and a, vi and a virtual safety car after the race has just gone to Edel Schumacher. I think in that maybe JD Venter could have gone for the overtake. Yeah, JD Venter absolutely must have gone for a potential overtake. He's got barely anything left on his car. The steering wheel's saying 13%, and he's definitely going to have to pit. It was the best of times, it is the worst of times, as into the pits come many drivers on this lap 7 of 19. Go racing again then. Still more drivers coming into the pits. Looking to get some team radio if possible, as the championship leader is currently 2nd and 10th. Past the Malnado, currently 17th place, he's setting a fastest third sector of anyone, a 17.316. So he's not going too slowly, which is a good thing, it's what we like to see. We don't really like to see too many crashes. Fabness coming through that chicane, and you can tell those soft tyres are definitely around the edge of their performance. Because right now, if you are on those older tyres, it must be... He's driving like on a knife edge. And we're gonna go on board the meal rest. There's barely any grip in no softs at all. And considering in how strategies can play out is into the pits comes iron at Fabness. Is an RQE in? No, an RQE staying out. So you go eight laps on the medium tires. This is great data for other teams you need. That kind of data. Eight laps on medium seems to be possible, but then the question is that swimming pool chicane, which punishes drivers who don't have enough grip to get through it perfectly, and it basically kills their races. Not here even coming through the Monaco Tunnel. I've, I've lost a bit of my voice, as you can tell. Now coming towards this, the swimming pool chicane. And it's that little left, right, left flick. And he's had to make a few more flicks because of his lack of grip. U UK ball seems to have gone past Daph Sanchez, who is also struggling for grip on those mediums. The other the other closest medium tire runner is Raver, who did come into the pits to swap onto them. Serbo Campo, by the way, guys, I think... No, he doesn't have to pit again, nor design at Babinus. is for quite a while here. Oh, Campo has leapfrogged Babinus here to take back 7th place. UK ball sending the fastest lap as the two drivers behind him are not queuing. Starlos Kynes, not Starlos Kynes, um, Dav Sanchez are both pit. And we do not have any team radio from any of the drivers so far from laps where they, where the radio lines were open. Maybe it's just because it was strategic stuff. Oh yeah. Ten laps to go. It's UK ball from Ravo from Marcus Nelson. Two of these guys are World Drivers Champions. The other one is a man who could dearly hope to try and get one as he comes through the chicane then. Salas Kynes, by the way, he's just gotten past Marcus Nelson. We were watching with Ravo there and he just got past the number 13 car who's on hard tyres. He's going to be passed by... It's there, but he can't but if he's not careful. He could have gone into the wall there. He mustered every single ounce of strength he had left in that Lamborghini Maker car and those hard tires to keep on to that fifth position and stay in this race as he now dives into pit lane. Nine laps to go. Only nine.
Just a reminder, the only man who has a time penalty to his name is Leo for Pinnacle Formula E team. And Pinnacle, after what seemed to be a strong showing that just didn't amount to anything last time out in Santiago, it's definitely not looking to be any Anything more than what they had last time out, probably even a little less. UK ball in the 89 car leading the way. And he is three seconds ahead of the closest rival, Ravo. Now, Einet Bamness, he's fourth. He's three ish seconds away from the back of Sebo Campo. This is technically a championship fight because they are side on points. When it comes to the other championship contenders in that top four, it's Raybo, it's Babness, it's Ocampo, it is JD Bento. Raybo could theoretically leapfrog the boys in fourth and fifth and take home a very good championship lead with eight laps left here in Monte Carlo. We look at Seb Ocampo, he's trying to close back up to the back of Starlust Kinds to try and take home a second consecutive third place finish and a third consecutive podium finish here in season 14. As it come through the swimming pool chicane. On board with the 76 and we've got yellows as Babinus has fallen into a little bit of trouble there. I think he did just kind of slam the wall he did. It was not an RQ, he was there around the same time. So Babinus now drops down to 6th place, unfortunate for the hyperdrive driver, we've got 7 to go. And once the drivers actually exit the swimming pool chicane, they realise something. There is not a lot of room to overtake through the entirety of Sector 3. Like Sector 1, you can make a few audacious moves, usually at Sandavot or, or the station hairpin. Sector 2, it is basically all in the Monaco Tunnel. It's all in the Monocle Tunnel where you can make your overtakes. But Sector 3? You can't overtake in Sector 3. The track just tightens up so much that to try and go too wide would be suicide. And Ocampo, he's dropped off the back of the kind by quite a country mile. It's two seconds. The gap between the two drivers is right now. And the sky does look to be a little bit more overcast now. Looks to be a little overcast, a little more cloudy. We'll be monitoring the radar for, for hints of rain. JD Venter currently in 18th position. As Kynes now pits. Solus Kynes in the pit lane. Wouldn't have, expected, wouldn't have expected him to come in this soon, but he's got Mahaze Rogunison in the pits full company, and right ahead of him, that is UK ball. The pole sitter. So it's Raybo leading from a car park with six laps to go. It's pretty much still anyone's game. It's all going to come down to strategy as it usually does here in Monaco. And Camino now, he's holding up UK ball. If I'm in, if I'm in the shoes of the head strategy, of the head strategist for Braun Honda Grand Prix. The obvious thing to do is to let UK Ball by. Because Camino and UK Ball, they're in different races. UK Ball is fighting for the race win, and Camino is fighting for a top five finish, which he's currently in. So will they let UK Ball go by? He's, looks like they're actually gonna let the two drivers fight. They're side by side, coming into Anthony Nose. And Camino is gonna stay ahead. But does, does the 88 car peel into the pits? No. Ocampo's in, Ravo's in. Babinus staying out, he's ahead of the two Braun cars as finally UK ball is allowed up into P3. And that could even be a P2 if Babinus doesn't get a move on. We've got five to go here in Monte Carlo. And yes, UK ball sends it down the inside for second place. We see these moves all the time here. And that is second for the British 89 car, the season 10 champion. And Babinus actually looks to be kind of struggling a little bit. Struggling as well. And out of the race, 
has gone Marcus Nelson. Nelson out of E3. That, if you just about saw that, was the stricken Lamborghini Mako car with five laps left in this E3 to run. Almost thought that not. Huey had a problem or something going through the swimming pool chicane, but no, it was at, it was literally just after the station happened. Yui has come into the pits. So Yui is in the pits, getting his tires changed. So Yu Cable will retake that lead of the race. Kamino and Babinus both in the pits. It's all going to be up to Ravo as we begin lap 15. He's not going to be second, is he? Or will he? Will he be second? He is second. And Kamino currently third, and he's got a not Yui right behind him for company. At top three. Top four even. And separated by six seconds, but Cap, but Kynes and Yui look to be the two drivers who have a shot for the last position on the podium. That's really the main fight, the positions that you can see. As you can see, Kynes nowhere near Rainbow, but Inokuri trying to close in on that Jaguar car ahead of them. You can see few more clouds falling. There could be a chance of a late race rain shower, in fact. As all the rain is showing, the likelihood of rain at the post-race celebrations is very high. But it doesn't mean that it can't happen during the race as well with three laps to go. No one's actually be coming through the second sector when you came all is there. And that's the only sector of track where someone's there and someone isn't. MF1 World trying to close in on Bob for that crucial 17th position. And JB Vence is in. Neil Rez is also in with him. And I do not think that JB Vence can come home today with points. Unless there's a lot of chaos because he's going to come out of the pits here. And he's going to be 18th. He's going to be 17th. He's going to be either or. But it's not going to be a high position for the Mercedes FE team driver. Meanwhile, their customers in hyperdrive racing in second and seven. There have been a lot of words flying around on with hyperdrive for season 15 if they want to change their engine supplier. If they were to change it, they, they'd probably change on to Honda because they're being beaten by a Honda engine, a Honda powertrain rather now. As we go on to lap 17 of 19. And yet, not a lot is happening, but of course, when you have that red flag after only a handful of races, uh, racing laps earlier on in the wet, you can only expect so much. And so can Babinus here. I know Babinus looking for sixth place, can't find a way through. Not has a good thing yet. He's going to try and get another shot coming into this turn that precedes the station hairpin, and up into sixth place has gone Ayla Babinus. Babinus up into sixth place, very nice move from him, but that's probably going to be where he's going to be bottlenecked, sadly, because there's four seconds between him and Ocampo, so as it stands, I believe Seb Ocampo would take the lead of the Drivers' Championship unless Wayron gets past U Cable. U Cable seems to be going a little slower than you would have expected, but he is kind of just making sure he doesn't make any major mistakes as he goes on to the penultimate lap. He's got Ravo right behind him. These two drivers, teammates in season one, and they've basically been in both championships on this channel for every single season. New Cable forced to miss out on season number 12 of the FBMC due to, due to Dash Sanchez, as Mercedes' reserve driver at the time, taking up that slot in this championship. It just kind of seems right now, as JD Venter sets the fastest lap of the Epria 101.966, who'd have expected us to reach sub one minute times. It's pretty soon. But on this, the penultimate lap for U Cable, he's only got another lap. Four more kilometers until he can say that he has won the Monaco E3, the Monte Carlo E3, once again. This was the race back in season 10 that really showed everyone that he is a that he was a serious championship threat 
in that season where he finally took home a championship. Akari, MF1 World and JD Venter fighting over that 60th position. It's very close between these three. So wonder you ask yourselves, well, how have they not tangled yet? They're side by side coming through the chicane as JD Venter hanging back just to see what they do. And JD Venter sending it down the inside the same way that Akari did it for 17th place. But out in front, and you can see Sebo Campo just about getting ahead of Saros Khan's coming through the hairpin. David Kamenow setting the fastest first sector of anyone there. But as he comes through the chicane, then Raybo two seconds off the back of this man, UK Ball, in the number 89 car. He's had a pretty turbulent first two races of this races of the season, not scoring any points in Jeddah, not scoring any points in Santiago, but in Monte Carlo on the third time of asking, not only will UK Ball score points, not only will he be on the podium, but UK Ball wins the Monte Carlo E3, Rebo second, and Anokui will be third across the line, you know, and Sebo Kampa now coming across for a brilliant P4 finish with Sars Kynes behind him, looking at Pastor Malnado now, who's been passed by J.D. Benter, that was for the 15th position. And what a race UK ball ran, it was perfect, perfect, right down to the last minute detail, and that is how the 89 came home to win this race. Well after a red flag stoppage, after many a crash, and a restart that did actually see it, the race finish to the end. This is your podium. UK Ball wins from Ravo and Anok Yui, your top three. Then it is Sebo Campo, Salas Kynes, Anup Babinus, and David Camno. Eighth place is Mahavir Gunathan. And then it's Jack Tigranes and Dav Sanchez, your top ten. Outside of the points is Anok is Yuki Suo rather, Marlis Chaclerk, Bob and JD Venter. Then it's Leo Castamalnado. MF1 World, Akari, and Milrez. Non finishers were Marcus Nelson, Teodor Schumacher, and Daniel Bogdasarov. In the driver standings, Sebastiano Campo leads the way two points ahead of Ravo, who's another two points ahead of Arnold Badness. Then it's JD Venter, Salas Kynes, UK Ball, Mahave Ragunathan, Anot Kiwi, Jaco Tigranes, Milrez tied with Pastor Malnado. Then it's Staff Sanchez and David Cameron tied with 12. Yuki Suo, then it's MF1 World, and Lamas Chaclerk tied for 15th. Bob is 17th on a single point, then it's the non point scorers of Daniel Boxer, Marcus Nelson, Taylor Schumacher, and the two pinnacle cars. In the Constructors Championship, heading into the most chaotic race of the season on average, the Marina Bay E3, Hyperdrive lead the way on 84 points from DS Andretti and Jaguar, then it's Braun and F and Brad Ball tied on 33 points, Stella tied for 4th place found, then it's Mercedes FE team on 31 points, Rodin Toyota and Lamborghini Mako tied on 14, then it's Renault Edams on 11 points, Skoda Volkswagen on 4 points, and Pinnacle FE team still yet to score. We'll see you guys next time then for the Marina Bay E-Prix.